Madison was in The Wolf of Wall Street. She was in Orange is the New Black. She was in The Bachelor. She was in All My Children, Person of Interest, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. She was in The Good Wife, the HBO show Vinyl, The Other Woman, and 30 Rock. Wow. So um, without further ado, um, Madison McKinley. Hi, Madison. How are you? Uh, am I on? You are on. You're live here on the Direct Fantastic. Discovery. Fantastic. Next victim. Here we go. Uh, yes. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you must thank you. Thank it. you for having me. No, thank you. So how uh, how how are you doing? How uh, how's things? Um, you know, what? hold on one second. I'm getting kind of fuzzy with you. Hold on. Sure. Yeah. No, that's fine. We are uh, just currently on hold with Madison as we're uh, going through some technical things. Hello. Can you hear me better uh, now? I you are all fuzzy. We can indeed, and I uh, and I am typically always always fuzzy, right, guys? Like I'm always no, a little fuzzy because yeah. uh, you don't shave. That's so true. I don't. I have that. The back, uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> He was the bear in uh, The Revenant. I, I, I was indeed. Um, so I talked to you today. Did you say you went to see a movie last night? Did I go to see a movie? Yeah. Um, I go to see a movie most nights, but no, not last night. You did. Have you seen The Revenant? I have, yes. Did you like it? I mean, Leo's work is pretty much untouchable. I, I did like it. What did you think? Yeah. No, we loved it. We did a show on it, and um, we it was yeah. shot in my hometown, and um, we had lots of... Uh, Lots of people talking about it and uh, just sharing their experiences about how the movie... It was shot in your hometown. That's pretty miserable, wasn't it? Freezing. Oh, yeah. We are not going to talk about weather on this show. No way. It was uh, miserable. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely but yeah, miserable. we're above that. We are indeed. So um, I, my first question for you is how does, how does show business find you or do you find show business? How does that, how does that happen to you when, you when you started out really young? Um. <clears throat> See, for me, it was kind of a roundabout way of getting into it. Uh, I was I was going to college, I was going to school, and then um, sort of slip slided and landed my way into a Sports Illustrated contest of all things, um, their swimsuit competition, which I didn't win, but I was lucky enough to pick up a contract from that, so I started modeling all over the place. Um, you know, not your high-end stuff, but the stuff that's kind of your bread and butter and pays the bills and allows you to travel, which is wonderful. Uh, so that was good. And then from there, it sort of transitioned into acting. So it was a little bit of a later start in life for me. But, um, you know, uh, once I got bit by the bug, as they say, I was sort of hooked. So. What were, your, um, what were your early inspirations as, uh, as a kid? Were you looking at, at the models of the day, or were you kind of looking at actors that you thought, yeah, I kind of like them? You know, none of the above. I feel like I was one of, I grew up in the mountains, so I was one of those kids. I was out playing, you know, sardines and hide-and-go-seek and stuff. I loved movies. Sardines. We turned our attic into a movie theater. Um, so, so on the weekends, my sisters and I would go up and we'd just lock ourselves in with popcorn and not come out for the entire weekend. So that was probably where it came from, but... I didn't know it at the time. What uh, what movies did you watch? <laughs> um, boy, Let's see, um, like kids movies or are they? I, I, how old are you? No, I, no, I, no, no, no. I really loved dark movies growing up. So, Wolf was one of my favorite movies. Uh, Interview with a Vampire, The yeah. Firm. Oh, I don't know. We watched a whole bunch, but kind of on the darker side always. So you mentioned that you grew up in uh, in the mountains. You're in the Rocky Mountains. You're in Vail, Colorado, right? So at, yes. w at what point do you start to grow out of Vail and the options that Vail, Colorado has for you? And you start to to look at other other options. When when did that happen? Did that happen fairly soon? Like f fairly quickly? It did. I was in um, high school, and then you know everything just sort of happened and growing up in Vail it's you know I'm not going to say it's sheltered but um, it's a very small town so first place I ever moved from there was Australia and I remember as the plane was landing I was so scared and just thinking to myself what have I done what have I done what have I done what have I done take me back take me back take me back um, so it was a real shock kind of coming out of that uh, small small little community you know environment and then exploring everything else but you know, dive into the deep end of the pool. 
Yeah, no, abs absolutely. Um, so your acting training, parts that you're, you're sort of doing modeling gigs and then you're sort of, are you looking to, to get formalized acting training or did you just kind of yeah, go with Yeah, it, you the know, it was a strange the way it happened to me. Uh, I ended up booking a role on 30 Rock. I played the Dutch cousin of um, Siri and... I just sort of fell in love with it. So at that point, I decided that this is what I really wanted to be doing. Uh, I took a step back from modeling. I went and I, you know, started taking class after class after class. I studied with a whole bunch of different studios in New York. And I think that it's important as an actor to continue studying. So I, I've kept doing that. But um, I decided if I'm going to do it, I want to take it seriously. Uh, so that's what I did. And I, I kind of quit modeling at that point and was like, all right, here we go. Here we go. It took a long time before I ever really got going. But... Um, that was the way that it happened. So after you booked um, the Dutch, the Dutch cousin on Thirty Rock, um, what's the next job that you do? Is is, is it roles in that vein, or are you like? <laughs> you know, it was funny. That role was Dutch, and all the lines were in Dutch. And I think that it's probably because of that. But the next handful of things that I ever did were all foreign language. Or, you know, I was speaking a foreign language or with an accent. So I think from there I went and did a. Uh, recurring role on Rescue Me, in which I was Russian. Um, and I remember I got to that set, and <laughs> the director comes up, and they're like, okay, well, instead of the lines that we've given you, we want you to just start speaking Russian. I'm like, okay, <laughs> hold on one second. I don't actually speak Russian. But from the casting, they'd only ever seen the tape, and they assumed from the casting that I was Russian, wow. and therefore was completely fluent in Russian, and I look a little bit Eastern European, so uh, it was one of those just, you know, jaw-dropping moments of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be in my trailer trying to figure out what I can possibly say. <laughs> uh, so from there, it was a lot of, you know, foreign, foreign characters. Uh, do you think that um, being a model or being an actor is, is harder, is easier? They're, they're sort of different animals, aren't they? Oof, yeah, um... Yeah, I would say that both have their pluses and minuses. <laughs> you know, uh, acting is definitely harder to break into, and I will say that I certainly got paid more as a model. Um, you know, and there's something really nice to be said about having a job where you go, you shoot, and then you're finished. Yeah. However, um, you know, for me, I found that the nights that you can't sleep, that your mind is just reeling in the character, or you know, so wrapped up in the story. Um, it's those moments that have really hooked me to acting. So I'm not sure that I've made the right choice, but you know, I'm pretty happy with the direction I'm going. Well, you know, you, you, it's nice to have that sense of fulfillment and to really be excited about what you're doing. And I, I finally feel that now. So, so I, you know what? I absolutely, I would agree with you. I did some research, and um, I I saw a great interview that you did on Ellen about being <laughs> on The Bachelor. And you know what? What really struck me about that was um, you, you you go in. With your 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 wits about you, absolutely clear about what's you know what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. But what was your reason for going on the show? Was it another um, another opportunity to kind of stretch your your acting skills, or was it just purely to to explore that world, which must be madness of The Bachelor? Yeah, it is madness. Uh, okay, The Bachelor came for me sort of interesting time in my life. Um, <laughs> between you and I, I just had my heart absolutely broken, and I'd kind of gone on a little bit of a world breakup tour. Oh, jeez. Um, before filming, I think that I'd spent a little time alone in an ashram in Nepal, and I was just kind of all about anything that was coming, I was going to do. This was my life. I was going to experience it. Hoorah. Uh, <laughs> so The Bachelor presented itself, and I was kind of all four, like, all right, let's, let's do this, why not? Uh, it seemed completely ridiculous to me, but I'd watched the show when I was young, and, you know, it seemed fun, why not? I, I thought that because I had had the opportunity, you know, they said I could be on it, and I was like, okay, you know, I'd be a fool to turn it down, so that is why I originally went on. Absolutely, and it gives you that kind of uh, exposure to the world that, uh, you know, is really helpful for an actor, isn't it? Well, Frankly, it sounds like, you know, I mean, who wouldn't want to do it? You get to travel all over. They've screened about a zillion people. This person wants to get married, you know. Um, it sounds like the dream gig. <laughs> who wouldn't want to do all of those things? The reality is a little bit different, but the way that they present it sounds fabulous. And, of course, you know, I'm, I'm all up for those things. 
We're talking. And get the opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're talking live with Madison McKinley here on uh, Chaotic Radio on the Director's Cut Show. Um, okay, so uh, you get the gig, The Bachelor. You're going to go. What's the atmosphere mm-hmm. like with that many women and cameras? And <laughs> it is. It must so have been insane. intense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't spend time in sororities or anything like that. So uh, it is very intense, you know, and it, it does get catty and it gets everything. And they are. They. Yeah. It's like, um, they spur it on a little bit. You know, you were <laughs> you're drinking, you're having fun, you're everything. But there's something about being taken away from your phone, your books, your magazines, the entire outside world, the internet, there's no touch with any of that, you know, you're given one focal point, which is The Bachelor, and so all of a sudden there's this air of competition that kind of comes up between all the women, you know, even if you don't think that this would be the right man for you, there's that air of competition, and I think for the first part of the show, that's probably what takes over, and so because of that, oh my god, (laughs) it it gets very intense, as you can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Now, you know, through this, um, how have you been able to, you know, to, to sort of protect yourself as you're in the, the as the days go by of being on the show? How are you able to, to kind of keep yourself afloat instead of succumbing to what seems to me to be an absolute trap of madness and insanity? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I am so thankful that the people producing that show are just fantastic. They are still some of my very good friends. And so in the off time when the cameras are off, you get to hang out with them and just be chill Yeah. and kind of have the real life, real whatever. So you can connect to that. Um, plus I really, you know, I'm a little bit introverted. So the moments that I would spend alone you can kind of ground yourself and get away from the, you know, caddy this or the caddy that. So what and that being said, I've met some great friends on that show and I'm still friends with them to this day, but when you're all in such tight quarters, I think that we had eight girls in one bedroom when I first got there. So it is it is cramped, and it is hard not to step on each other's toes when that's that, what, uh, that shoved in there. <laughs> what uh, what did you learn about yourself, and what was the takeaway from that experience when you uh, when you left The Bachelor? Hmm, uh, you know, aside from watching what a crazy social experiment it is and kind of learning about yourself and learning how you deal with those sort of things, um, but there's one thing we haven't talked about. You had vampire teeth on, didn't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, there are reasons for uh, starting that subject. Yes. Years. So, uh, <laughs> so right away, right away, that that shows to me that there's some kind of level that you know that you're you're protecting yourself. You you know that you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is well. I mean, that was that was the most fun that I had on the show. You know, <laughs> uh, it sort of it was a thing that I do for fun sometimes, and, and producers and I thought it would be a hilarious. You know, why not? Why not? Um, and the, the producers and, just must have just eaten that up, right? Oh, they loved it. I loved it. I, I wouldn't have changed that for a minute. And you know, I still bring them out sometimes, but <laughs> for absolutely. me, it made it a lot more fun. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, Sort of my Andy Kaufman moment. Yeah, I like that. I think that's really cool. Um, again, we're talking live here with uh, Madison McKinley, uh, star of, well, I guess Wolf of Wall Street is your is what people know you the most. And so while we're talking Wolf of Wall Street, um, that was directed by a, a semi-famous kind of director, wasn't it, Rob? Was it? Who? Who? who, who I'm not sure who, I who did direct that. I don't that. remember who that uh, <laughs> is. Martin Scor. Um, Martin Scorsese. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah, a, yeah Martin Scorsese, a huge, uh, a huge idol of mine and a huge fan. Um, so, what's that like? You've you've had these experiences, and now you get to meet Martin. What was that like? Um, I'll tell you, I received and probably still have saved a message from my agent saying, well, Marty really liked your tape. He's been watching it and, you know, he wanted to know if he'd be interested in playing Heidi. And my jaw dropped. I I made everyone I know listen to that. Um, It was kind of just one of those moments in life where you have to shake yourself. Uh, So that was fantastic, you know, and then meeting him 
I mean, it's sort of a magical moment and a, a moment that a lot of actors will, you know, put at the top of their list. Absolutely. I, I yeah. And were you a fan of his work prior to that? As as big a fan as we are around here, we just, uh, we just love his movies. Anyone right? that likes film should be a fan of Marty's. I uh, think so, yeah. Yeah, so absolutely I was a fan, and I think that going into it, you know, you're just so nervous. I've never, I've worked with a handful of very, very talented and very gifted people, and I've been you know, fortunate for that, but wow, nobody made me nervous like that. Wow. Which is silly, because that's when you finally meet him, he's so lovely. <laughs> How do you deal with those nerves? Like, you're going to see somebody that, you know, obviously you admire, and, and you're going to work with him for the first time, and he he's so intense. How do you just, how do you get past that nervous stage and go into work mode? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an interesting thing. We were shooting the scene. Uh, I've had, to put, yeah, we were shooting the scene. They clear out everyone that's not essential to the set way before he ever arrives. And then all of a sudden his car pulls up um, onto the walkway, which, you know, no cars are supposed to be allowed there. His car pulls up and you can see the whole thing from the deck of the boat where we're shooting. And at that point, you're just kind of shaking and nervous, and, you know, they built it up a little bit that he's coming in, and so it's only adding to the pressure. But the second that he walks in, he just starts cracking jokes. I mean, left and right, you know, he's joking with us, he's joking. It's freezing there. It is the dead of fall, late late fall, beginning of winter, Battery Park, New York City, and we're in bikinis and bathing suits, so we're freezing. And he just, I don't even remember what he said, but he had all of us laughing within, you know, three minutes. Uh so after that, it was just like, oh, okay, I can do this. I can breathe. And he was so warm and so welcoming that it took everything away right away once you met him. But the buildup before that was intense. Yeah. Does he run a good set? He really, um, really helpful to you as a performer? You know, he's great because he really likes to watch his actors soar. Um, you know, I have been lucky that both of the scenes that I've ever, I've done two shows with him now or a movie and a show with him. And both of mine were with the lead, you know, so in both scenarios, I was able to do my scene and then the rest of the scene went on with the um, lead character. So after that, you know, they're shooting the rest of the scene and I get to spend it in the village with Marty while he's watching them. And so here is Leo finishing and he's got this huge kind of monologue and then completely improv. He's throwing lobsters down the stairs. And Marty's back there, and he's just cheering and screaming and screaming and screaming. He's so excited, and he just really loves to see his actors kind of go for it. Oh, fantastic. And it's doubly nerve-wracking for you because of the relationship that uh, DiCaprio and, uh, and Scorsese have together. Of one of They've worked on five or six different projects, haven't they? So. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's probably it. You know, they have that connection between the two of them, so there is the freedom for them to kind of play around. But it made you much more comfortable being there. You know, you felt like there was open ground for anybody to do anything as long as it went with the scene. So that was nice. Hitchcock says that directors should shoot a love scene like a murder and a murder (laughs) like a love scene. Would you agree to that? I mean, I love that. (laughs) That's the way I like most of my love scenes. (laughs) Okay. So um, I want to know how you work as an actor. I'm, I'm that's, that's the thing. What, what it's, what's the most important criteria about a script that will make you want to do the project? That when you get that script that you go, yeah, I, I want to be part of it. I really want to be part of this. Um, yeah. hmm. <sighs> okay. Well, I mean, I will say that it is still a business. So truthfully, on the last film that I did, um, Bruce Davidson gave me great advice. And he said that you need to think of it as a matrix. You look at the project versus the character versus, I'm sorry to say, but the money. And as long as you have two of the three, then the answer should probably be yes. Um, so I've, I've kind of kept that as like a really good note and a really good bar. But character-wise, I think the most intriguing are, I like characters that are dark and have that depth, but you know, can still sort of connect to the humanity. I like tapping into that side. Do you think that roles, the roles for women, are better or worse in the last five years than than prior to that? Do you think there's an evolution? The kind of scripts that perhaps that you're getting is that indicative to where, you know, um, other actors are sort of sort of going to? Do, do you know what I mean by that? I do know what you mean. Um, 
you know, and I think it has been a much debated topic in Hollywood for a little while, but just having that awareness, I think already has started to make a big difference. You know, um, the acknowledgement of that inequality is definitely the right step. And I think that there's a long way to go, but giant progress has been made. You know, the characters that you've seen when we playing in the last five years, last two, three years have been so much better than what was out there before. And you know, women are pretty interesting. So it's nice to see that, uh, Hollywood is paying attention to that. Well, well, speaking of, uh, women being pretty interesting, um, you're in an episode of Orange is the New Black. <laughs> I am. Talk about women. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, how uh, how did that all uh, come about? What was uh, what was that process like? And what was um, what was the, the preparation that you went through for that? <laughs> uh, I will start by saying I'm a giant fan of Orange is the New Black, so having the opportunity to be on that show was definitely a highlight in my career, and it was pretty much put me on the show. Yes, I'll do it. You know, I have such respect for it. Um, that being said, it was so much fun. You know, it's definitely a female driven operation, you know, from even the, you, know, you never see DPs, you never see everyone. There's basically a woman. There are men, but it's, it's very female dominated. And that's so nice to see. So it was a ton of fun. Um, preparation wise is interesting because Pretty much right before we shot it, they, the writers uh, completely changed the scene. So everything that I'd kind of thrown into it and prepared beforehand went out the window. Uh, for me then, at that point, it kind of became just learn my lines, go with the flow, be open, you know, writer tells your box. Wow. So uh, is, does that ha- is, that a, is that a common thing that happens on, on television where you go in and you prepare it a certain way and you know that the scene, perhaps the beats are going to be like this and um, all of a sudden it's, you're thrown a curve? Is that, is that a commonplace thing or was it just unique to the show? Uh, I think that in, in any given show, rewrites are a, a constant and, and sometimes they're definitely for the best. I think in this case, it was absolutely for the best. It's, uh, it's, but it's, that's just what you have to do, you know? Yeah. Take the hits. And, and handle them the best that you can. But for me, I was, I was very grateful that it changed in the way that it did. Is it fair to say that uh, it's different because there are really no restrictions on what is shot on that show? That perhaps <laughs> if you, for other shows that it can be a, a, a little more restrictive? Well, it was certainly my first time wearing a Merkin. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't seen. But, uh, you know... But yeah, I in mean, any it, given show, any sexual scenario, any nudity, any everything is gone over beforehand by your agents in like a ten-page long writer, so you know exactly what you're getting into. Um, so yes, it was different, but you know, it was definitely something that I was willing out for doing based on the scene and based on the characters and based on the show that I was getting into. So I was absolutely for it, but uh, it was. I wish I had a shot of tequila. It was bold. <laughs> I don't say that. Yeah, absolutely. An, an amazing, amazingly brave scene to do. Um, but I think that's the, that's the great thing about television nowadays is that we have, it, it's not all, you know, network television where there's so many limitations on what you can say, what you can do, and what the topics are, and all of that stuff. This is, it feels like it's the, the old West, but in a really, really good, good way, do you think? I couldn't agree more. I mean, the things that are being done on television and with new media these days, it just makes you so excited for the direction the industry is going. You know, they've got such good writers, they've got money, they've got the time to tell it, they have the talent to do it. It's, it's a great time to be a part of the industry. So, technical question for you. Um, mm-hmm. Is it a different skill set shooting digital as opposed to shooting film? Hmm. Uh... Is there a freedom that you get with digital cinema that you can go, okay, we know we can yeah. do 10 or 15 takes, but film is like, we gotta, we kind of got to get this two or three in. Two or three in. I think that it goes both ways. It, it, you feel far more comfortable as an actor when you know that you have the possibility to do 20 if it's not good. You know, you can, you can play with it. You can really explore. You can... So I certainly feel much more comfortable with digital because I can really feel like I've worked that scene out and I've, I've put it down and I, I feel good about it. 
was some. Um, However, in my experience, usually it's take one or take two that they end up using. So, you know, there's something to be said for just at spur of the moment, the first time, the, you know, when you haven't done it again and again and again, then it is fresh and it is new. So um, I'm not sure which is better, but you definitely feel like you've got that extra layer of fat when it's digital. You know, you feel more comfortable. Uh, and the shot, Wolf of Wall Street was shot on uh, on film, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. so that it doubles the, the nerve factor. Not only is it film, but it's Scorsese and there's lobsters <laughs> flying. And it's, uh, it, it's just a, a fantastic, fantastic story. Um, so what's uh, what's upcoming for you? What's next? What uh, what are you doing? What are you looking to do? Are there parts that you want to play, people that you want to work with? What um, What's next? Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, I have a couple, I started doing a few more sort of independent films. And for me at this time, I think that that's been so exciting because you do really get those characters and you get to explore them and you get to get them into everything like that. And that is what I'm very excited about at the moment. So I have a couple of projects that are in the works. Um, one is being edited right now. A couple are hopefully set to start shooting this spring. So I'm excited about the direction that it's going. Um, yeah, we will see, <laughs> but, that, but that's what's going on right now. Um, okay, so I have these 10 rapid-fire questions that I love to, to ask artists. So are, are you game for, for 10 more questions? 10? All right, they're, uh, they're, calm down for me. They're, they're rapid-fire, and you can answer them. We're not. You don't need to debate them, but we could talk about them. It's totally up to you. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Um, number one, favorite movie? Uh, favorite movie? we we'll have to go back to the vampire thing and go with uh, Interview with the Vampire. Oh, nice. Great okay. movie. Who would Watch you... that movie time and time again. Um, do not very much. But I'll probably say that to say that. That's secret. It's mine. Who would you really like to work with? Who's on that list? Ooh. Quentin Tarantino. Anne Rice or Bram Stoker? Oh, Anne Rice all day. Favorite Pixar character? Wally, he made me cry. <laughs> that's uh, that's the first movie that I took my son to see. Uh, Wally. Yeah, oh, it's, that that's, movie. I mean, kind of a brutal point for humanity, but a beautiful I, movie. Yeah, I was going to say that. That was a um, I the first time I seen that I was on a cruise ship in Mexico, and I, oh, you know, no. <laughs> I I'm a fitness guy, right? So I do I, I'm in the fitness, and I'm. I'm I'm just in shorts and nothing else except sandals, and I'm looking at every, everybody. Everyone else. <laughs> I'm looking at everybody else, and literally, I have the 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 people on working these cruise ships are very friendly, and they're like touchy. Oh my god, I love your muscles and stuff. And I'm looking at all these other people, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it, how embarrassing for them, for me. To- oh, it's just painful. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, the, it's the cast and crew of humanity. Uh, Wally. Oh dear. Um, is there such thing as a bad experience on set? Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with it's all learning, but that doesn't mean it's not awful. <laughs> Last book you read? Um, all the light we cannot see. And this is the question, just a comment. The Rockies are the best, aren't they? Um, no, the Broncos are the best. Oh, no, I'm talking about the mountains. mountains are beautiful. <laughs> the mountains are the You know, we couldn't go answer, 30 though. minutes without the Broncos coming up. That, I, oh, my god. Rightfully so. Well, right. there you go. <laughs> if, you, uh, if you weren't an actor, what would you do? Oof, that's a scary question. <laughs> I, I am not sure. <laughs> Would you, would, uh, be in Africa, probably. Would you rather win? That was a good answer. <laughs> no, good it's, answer. It's a, it's Honest it's, answer. It is, yeah. Right? Okay. Wouldn't doubt Africa. <laughs> there <Yeah>. you go. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather win a SAG award or a Golden Globe? Africa. <laughs> but, um, a SAG award, you know. Like, when it comes from your peers, it just means something different, I think. And my favorite question that I love to ask everybody that's on the show, how do you replenish your creative spirit? Oh, I like that. Uh, for me, it's nature. I have now taken to, um, I have an actor friend who's just so driven and so in love with the craft. So I've 
take him to bring him on hikes because that'll really get you motivated. <laughs> but a, a combination of the two, being around people that are inspiring and nature. That's fantastic. Um, how can people find you on the net and follow you? Are you on Twitter or Instagram? It, yeah, or is there any of those uh, things? I, you know, I don't tweet because I actually don't have an excuse not for tweeting, but Instagram, absolutely. Oh, so uh, I am Mad McKinley, M A D, and then M C K I N L E Y. And I would love if someone followed me. That'd be great. We will uh, We will certainly make sure that, uh, that people do. Um, I th- I can't thank you enough. What a what a fantastic uh, a fantastic interview. And thank you so much for for doing this. And we went long tonight, and and that's okay, um, because when you've got such quality guests, it was uh, it was just such a great a great thing. Well worth the ten thousand dollar fine, of Abs- course. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Put on my tab. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Oh, thank you so much, Madison. And we'll uh, we'll talk to you very soon.